Oh, Max is in a bit of a huff. He heard me say that Jamie Evans, the jockey, was the special guest today. What's wrong with me? He said, I've come all the way down from Sydney. Now, you were fine and dandy this morning when you spoke to the producer on the end. Now you reckon you've got a cold. What's happened to you? No, I'm all right. Uh, of course, I'm sitting in Keith Elliott's chair, so <laughs> anybody in that position would be all right. It wasn't the Melbourne weather that did it to you in the last hour, was it? Well, put it this way, it hasn't picked me up a great deal. Jamie, congratulations. Great ride yesterday, a great win, and it's a great race, the Hiskins, isn't it? It's a fantastic race, Bruce. You know, it is the Cox Plate of jumping, and um, it was great to win it for a second time. What about the idea of set weights and a few penalties for feature races in the, in the jumping season? I think it's great. It will revolutionise jumps racing in Victoria because it enables the top horses to stay weighted in the big races each year, you know. We, we used to have a problem with the, the good horses getting weighted out, but now with the set weight races, they, they can you know, come up every year. Max, it's the opportunity for good flat horses maybe to do what they do in England and, and go for the feature races where they're almost at a weight for age scale. Yes, I, I, I see a lot of uh, attractive points about jumps racing, and I think this was highlighted yesterday. Uh, the one thing I wonder about set weight races, how would you, Jamie, weight a horse like a Century Magic uh, in a, a, a major steeplechase that basically only has hurdle form? Well, this is it. I mean, you've got to go on his hurdle form, and uh, this is what, the, you know, the, the, the thing people don't realise is the difference between hurdling and steeplechasing. It's a big difference. Much you know? quicker tempo hurdle racing? Much quicker, and the steeples, you can't afford to make one blue, as Century Magic did make a couple of blues and nearly sold out. So, you know, there's a big difference in it, and you sort of got to, you know, they've got to prove themselves over the fences before you can weight them right up to their potential. Well, you say you nearly sold out. You had a real problem at the fifth last, didn't you, where you lost your irons, and, of course, we'll see you at the last with a great piece of horsemanship. Was it a tough ride for you? It was pretty tough because he, he was trying to hurdle most of them, being, being a novice, you know, a novice at the, at the Caper, he's only scored two or three times, but Robert Spoon done a great job and, uh, you know, prepared him well and uh, I was lucky, but, I mean, he's managed to stay on his feet. Reading the paper this morning, you say you learned a trick coming to the last. Tell us about this when you were in Ireland. Yes, yeah, see, the Irish and English, they uh, ride on a very long rain over there because there's so much jumps racing. I mean, they fall off quite, quite a lot and... Um, they learned to ride on a long rein, which I think Rodney Griffiths now rides on a very long rein and he's improved his riding immensely. Um, yeah, when they're wrong at one and uh, their heads hit the ground, a lot of the jockeys in Australia, if they're riding on a short rein, they get ejected out the front. That's what happens when you, the horse loses his rider. But by going to England and Ireland, you learn to ride on a bit longer rein and then if their heads do go down, you can, you've got more chance to stay in the saddle. Can you, ah, sorry. yes, a beautiful trait of horsemanship, that long rein. But, Jamie, this fly swatting with the whip, this <laughs> out the back here, <laughs> yeah, uh, what that, is Jamie. the benefit of that? Well, I've got no elbow no more, Max. I had a bad fall and lost my elbow, and it's very, very hard for me to be as vigorous the Australian way. And I think a horse only needs to be hit once every three strides after the end of a jumping race. I mean, he's done his best. And um, it's not like a sprint race where you're flying to the line and you can get the momentum up the Australian way. You hit them once the English way and, and you, they stay hit because you can hit them a lot harder. And uh, they only need to be hit once every three strides. Is it the same rule in British racing for jumping jockeys as it is for flat jockeys where you can only mm -hmm. hit a horse a certain number of times? Uh, I, th I think it's the only way to hit them four times from the second last jump at a winning post. And you find this very effective? Well, obviously, the, the top English horsemen do. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I, I wouldn't do it on the flat because, I mean, I mean, Greg Hall's done it a couple of times, but I wouldn't do it. Um, just in the jumping races, they're, they're at their top, you know, and at the end of a gruelling jumping race, they only need to be hit once or twice. If weights are raised in the next few years, and there's a chance they might be, isn't there, Max? I mean, uh, people are getting bigger. Jockeys are getting bigger, and I think the horses that are get, get 45 and 46 is unrealistic now in the Melbourne Cup. There's no one to ride them. Would you consider, I mean, what weight could you ride at if a, if a champion stayer was given a big weight in a big race like the Melbourne Cup? If I, was in, uh, if I was in Australia during the summer months, I could get my weight down to 55. I think it's a very, very big problem with the weights these days with the jockeys because, as you said, everyone's getting bigger. And um, from inside the jockey's room, there's, there's a lot of the jockeys are unhappy about the minimum weight. I think these days that the minimum weight should be... 53 at least. Well, there's an opportunity. I mean, you rode lots of winners. I know you rode the Geelong Cup winner, didn't you, on the flat? Yeah, I had 285 winners on the flat. Not bad, is it? So, 
Stay with us, Jamie. I want to ask you about some of the Melbourne Cup chances coming up because you might have seen a couple of them. Let's get into uh, the Missile States. Clocker winning for the second consecutive year. I know you were very keen on Stormy Regent, weren't you, the, the three-year-old, who, who ran a great race, by the way. Yeah, Stormy Regent led. Uh, perhaps was a trifle underdone, but gave his back as a great sight. Jim Cassidy rode a very good tactical race here. He's taking Clocker up on the outside now. Now, under normal circumstances, you'd say Cassidy's covering too much ground, going a little bit quick. But under yesterday's circumstances, this was the right way to ride this mare. She was well turned out by uh, John Morrish. And as you can see here now, as the, the front runner, Stormy Regent, starts to paddle, uh, Cassidy pumping away, getting the best out of the mare, and gets uh, Stormy Regent the last couple of strides. She's As coming w for the bet down the outside and burst just up behind. Sorry, Max, she's coming for the Manicato. Do you think she's a better horse this time than she was last year? She'll have to be better. Now, if she was mine, she'd stay in Sydney. I think it's easier, but of course the prize money's better in the Manicato, so I suppose connections feel the gamble is there. Hariba, was he close to starting? Well, how close can a horse get when he's uh, not quite right? Well, oh, they did the right thing, obviously. Oh, long... certainly. But Ariba's one of these, uh, uh, these speed freaks. And, of course, they put so much into their galloping, uh, they, uh, they, they can hurt themselves, they strain themselves, they put stress on themselves. That's what's happening to Ariba. I, tell, I always worry when horses run sensational times on the track for about a month before they have a run, you just wonder how much is left by the time they get to their third or fourth oh, start. Oh, it's the individual. It's the individual. Sure, I agree, but I, you just wonder if you'll still be around when it counts most in the spring. I hope I'm completely wrong. <coughs> what about the protest in the last? Social rule getting it. White blaze in the straight. Most interesting one here, the gap seems to close with about 200 metres to run and Max the protest was upheld. Yes, uh, the winning margin was three quarters of a length. Uh, social rule of course was aided uh, perhaps by not seeing the winning post too, uh, too soon because he's got an, a an adverse uh, opinion of the winning post. He can prop at it but uh, the stewards stopped frame the, the, the film and that they showed that there was a, rain, uh, a run there for social rule. Uh, the, the winner my diamond rouge came across. Now, if you note in the straight there's a lot of buffeting inside and this was the key area whether, whether social rule was inconvenienced mostly by the eventual winner, My Diamond Rule. That's social rule in the red, poking up on the inside now, My Diamond Rule, in the yellow colours. But on the inside, there's a lot of scrimmage. You ought to stay, go out there. But the stewards ascertained that My Diamond Rouge came across and interfered with social rule, who is not the most uh, consistent racehorse in the world. He, he won the Dooman Classic as a three-year-old, didn't he? Looked like being nearly top class and hasn't quite gone on. Has only won two races in a couple of years. In Adelaide yesterday, Subastral won the feature race there. The favourite was Skipper Regent, very smart two-year-old from Victoria. Laura's Express was in this race, who had beaten Big Sky Montana at its last start. And the grey Vogues, who had a huge rap on it in about the third last place at the moment. Now, Skipper Regent gets into all sorts of trouble in the pink colours, white blaze in about 10th position. I still think it's got a terrific future. The, this is a two and three year old race at wait for age conditions, always run on the last weekend before they have their birthday. And all the horses having their birthday tomorrow, by the way. It's one of the reasons we brought Max down here. Um, <laughs> and you'll see that uh, Subastral takes the lead from Paddington in another two year old, a major Wilkes running on. And I did like the run of Skipper Region in uh, fourth of placing. Max, just quickly, the uh, Melbourne Cup, 23 nominations, uh, six from Ireland, two French, one Hong Kong, 14 English. Gonna be tough to handicap these horses. Oh, yes, uh, but handicapping, of course, is the key. And another vital area, it's not so much the vintage crops, the horses that are known, but it's the horse that uh, perhaps Jamie Evans knows about that could be Do you know one, the, Jamie? Uh, Fame and fortune, I've seen him run. He won the IRG champion hurdle in Ireland, which was the major lead-up race to Cheltenham carried 12 stone which is 76 and one on the bridle he's a very very good horse hasn't had much flat racing but Dermot well wouldn't be bringing him here for no reason we found that out last year Max great to see you in Melbourne stick around for a week or two you, <laughs> you might get used to it Jamie congratulations thanks very much Bruce a break uh, Bathurst coming up after this one of the best victories he's done it in the new V8 formula Larry Perkins wins well, the 2 is 1000